Hey guys, in this video I'm going to illustrate a technique very useful to randomly scatter some elements on a surface. You may notice some similarities with what the tile nodes in Substance Designer do, and you will not be wrong. Under the hood, they're using a very similar process to achieve that result. First step is to create a grid of UVs, starting from whatever mapping we are using. In this case, I'll use the first UV channel of the mesh, but everything works, or the aligned materials too. To create said grid, we just need to tile the UVs by the number of rows and columns we want and keep only the fractional part of the value. Now we need to move the center of the UVs to each grid cell center. That means subtracting 0.5 from them, so that the origin moves where before was the coordinate 0.5, 0.5. We can finally start to randomize everything. Let's start by moving each cell UV in a different random direction. To do that, we need something that gives us a random value for each cell. Best way to achieve that, in this case, is to use the Vector Noise node, set to use the Cell Noise algorithm. This node returns a random RGB value for every 3D integer value we input. So, to have a random colored grid that matches our UV grid, we can truncate the tiled UVs and append a scalar to them to have a vector tree. The RG channel of this vector will make us to have a different value for each cell, while we can eventually use the scalar we appended in the B channel as a random seed. Now that we have our random values to play with, we can start by taking the first one, in the R channel, and use it to create a random unit vector. Said vector can be created by treating the value as an angle and calculating its sine and cosine. These unit vectors will be added to each cell UV, but since from the cell center to the edge we have a maximum distance of 0.5, we have to first divide them by 2. Now each cell has its center in a different position. To add more variety, we can use the second random value provided by the noise to vary the cell's UV scale. To do that, we could just divide the UVs by the scalar value after applying the offset. But we need to ensure that each cell content remains completely inside the cell. So we need to account for that by scaling the offset vector too. Let's add few nodes to visualize better what's happening. Notice that the bigger the shape, the shorter the offset vector becomes, to keep everything inside the cell. To have a better result, we can narrow a bit the range of the random scale as we like.
The last random value can be used to randomly rotate the cell content. To do that, we have to treat it as an angle and pass it as time to a rotator node after converting the values to radians by multiplying them by 2 pi. Our work is almost complete, we just need to bring the UV center at 0.5 and saturate everything to avoid texture repetition inside the cells. Let's use these UVs to map a texture. As a bonus, we can push this shader a step further and make each cell randomly select a different object from an atlas texture. As example, I'll use this texture I was able to generate by using this super handy node for Substance Designer I found here on Gumroad. I'll put the link in the video description. To achieve what I just proposed, We'll need, of course, another random value. We can duplicate the one we already have and change its input B channel to make it return a completely new set of values. Now we'll interpret this value as an index that points to one of the elements the atlas contains. We need to multiply it by the number of elements in the atlas, truncate the result and convert it to a 2D index. Lastly, we have to divide this result again by the number of rows and columns contained in the atlas. We just created a new UV offset to add to our randomized coordinates, but first we have to divide them too by the number of atlas columns and rows. This technique comes very handy to add non-repeating variety to our materials. There are many more of them, of course, which will be discussed in future videos.